Okay, so the next one on this list is Apple. So the big question going into this earnings report is how well would Apple be able to deal with the semiconductor shortage and the other supply chain issues? I'm sure we've all heard about how difficult it was to get the new iPhone 13, but when earnings released, Apple reported earning $2.10 versus $1.90 expected and $123 billion in revenue versus $119 expected. Now, when we look at this quarterly earnings chart, we can see exactly why Apple stock has been on fire. Apple's continued to grow profits with the last quarter alone bringing in more than all of 2016. And keep in mind, this was all while dealing with supply chain constraints. Now, Tim Cook also mentioned on the call that like Microsoft, Apple was looking to get involved in the metaverse. He didn't really seem to give out specifics, but he did mention that Apple is interested in getting involved and Apple could potentially use the AR kit apps that are already on the app store to gain access. Now, I've already let you guys know what I think about the metaverse, so we'll see. However, this does seem like a pretty minimal investment, so I'm not really that concerned. Okay, so looking at the revenue and net income, we can see that there was a little bit of a decline in the post super cycle year, but the drop was much less than any other post super cycle year, which again with supply chain constraints is pretty impressive. Apple's revenue and expenses show a company whose cost of revenue is around 60% of the revenue. And similar to Microsoft, they make so much revenue that the 23 billion they spend on both research and development and selling and general and administrative expenses is almost nothing in comparison to the amount of money that they bring in. Now, when we look at Apple's revenue broken down by its products, we can see that the iPhone still dominates the revenue generation. And services is actually coming in second with almost 72 billion generated over the last year. But unfortunately, Apple doesn't break out the income generated by each of these products, so we can't see that. However, they do break down all products versus services, which shows us that even though services over the last year only brought in a smaller amount of revenue, they still accounted for about a third of all of the profit. So services is becoming a very big profit generator for Apple, which has been Tim Cook's goal to get away from relying so much on the iPhone. Now, when we look at Apple's forecasted earnings, we can see that they're projected to grow from $365 billion in revenue and $94 billion in profit to $334 billion and $111 billion in profit by 2024. Now, when when we look at Apple's revenue growth, it shows them slowing down to only around 5% growth by 2023 and 2024. But looking at this chart, we can see how Apple is very up and down between the super cycle years. However, the down years this year project to grow instead of the typical drop. So if we look at the five-year average growth rate, we can see that Apple recently has picked up a lot since they started growing the services business, with the last five years showing 11% growth annually. If we value Apple using an 8% growth rate for the bottom end and 12% for the top end of the range, that gives us a fair PE value somewhere between 18 and 26. Now, when we look at this valuation charted out, we see that Apple is pretty expensive with the current price not actually hitting fair value until between 2023 and 2024, which for me puts Apple in the hold range. Not good enough to buy, but not too expensive where you should sell. Now that clip was a part of a much larger video that I did covering about six stocks. So if you want to check out the full thing, make sure you check it out right over here. And as always, thanks for watching.